Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely Saturday morning. On this channel, I've gone over Apple product repair for a very long time because it is my specialty. Not just how to do it with 600 edited videos and 400 live streams, but also I go over the times where Apple has done something that made, where they really just had to go out of their way to make it more difficult for us to be able to do our job. Whether it is hiding schematics and board views from people, even if they're authorized technicians, making sure that chipsets are not available so that we don't have access to the parts that we need to be able to fix customer devices, or coming up with these new pairing and calibration routines for replacing parts that used to not require it that now do that we don't have access to as a repair shop. However, over the years, this channel has very much so evolved from talking about how Apple can be anti-repair to how every company is becoming anti-repair. And I think it's a very important focus to go over every single company seems to be slowly taking steps to repairability being something that you, the end user, are locked out of. Or maybe you're not locked out of it, it's just made more difficult or paywalled in a way so that your default is going to be to go to the dealer for what used to be basic repairs. And this is a story that was emailed to me by somebody that I thought was fairly worth sharing. Lewis, I thought you might be interested in this. Quick summary. I have a 2018 Volkswagen Atlas, and the battery recently died. There's a dealer-only calibration that is required for the new battery, for which the dealer wants $82.50 to do. I found a software package that can do it, so I ended up going that route. But I complained to my state rep and senator and suggested that all vehicles in Missouri should have that function exposed to end users. Below is the correspondence. If you're interested, I blocked out his email, because block out the Senate emails because these are public services and that have their emails published on these websites. Anyway. Thank you for your email. I'm going to ask to make sure I keep the senator informed on the issue. I did take the time to ask the auto dealers about your specific issue, so I wanted to share their response with you. And this was the response from the dealer, which I will read to you. Good morning, my friend. There are truths to the claims, but they are not a money grab, but a necessity of the complex system in such vehicles as the Volkswagen Atlas. It's not necessarily a calibration as much as it is an adaptation of the new battery to the gateway module. The gateway module in these vehicles changes the charging pattern based off the battery type, voltage ranges, and amperage. If that information is incorrect, then it can affect the way the alternator gets a signal from the gateway module and cause an issue in the charging system due to misinformation being sent. As far as charges go, we charge half an hour for the adaptation on a vehicle that has had a battery replaced by the customer or another shop without the capabilities. Our labor rate is $165, so in that scenario, it would be a charge of $82.50. Please let me know if you have any further questions, and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Uh, Personally, I don't believe that a dealer charging $82.50 for half an hour of their time is an issue at all. Dealers should charge for their services. They have to pay their technicians, they have to pay their rent, they have to pay their building costs, and everything else. The part that is kind of weird is you used to place a battery on your car, and you did not need a special dealer calibration tool to replace the battery. You just got a new battery, you put in your car, and that was that. I asked him what he did, and apparently he bought a piece of software with a pro option that allows you to do this. I, I asked him, how difficult is this? How easy would it have been for you to screw it up and, you know, make something explode? And he said, with limited experience, and I quote, it was extremely easy. A non-technical person could use it with ease. It does have a lot of things you can change, so the most complicated part was finding the battery adaptation menu among all the other items. They really should add a search, and he was referring to this piece of software that I will link to down below. The one thing that I note is that this does actually cost more than what the dealer wanted, but he seemed so frustrated and aggravated for the fact that they required that you go to a dealer to do this that he didn't even mind paying more money to simply not give it to the dealer. An absolute chad. Awesome. As far as room for error, it asked you to type in amp hours. Factory was 70, the new one was 72. Again, this is going to be something that's literally written on the battery that you buy, so not exactly hidden. I suspect 70 would have been close enough. I also had to choose AGM from the list for battery type. I suppose I could have entered incorrect info for either of these. I think the difference is older cars didn't need this calibration at all. I guess some of the newer systems, such as Auto Start Stop, use this to learn when to disable themselves, and maybe it changes the way it charges the battery over time. I saw claims that the battery would overcharge, and life would be shortened if you didn't calibrate. The problem is, again, you should be able to calibrate the battery that you put in your car that you bought without having to go to the dealer or try to find some third-party solution to do it for you. You used to just replace the battery in your car. You take the old one out. You put a new one in. If there are differences in the battery, if there's a difference that needs to be accounted for, this is something that you should be able to account for without having to give Volkswagen money because you already gave them money when you bought the car. And to be honest with you, I wouldn't be surprised if more automakers made it more difficult to use tools like this into the future. First, you don't need to do something special when you replace a battery. Then you do need to do something special, but if you're willing to Google and dig a little bit, you'll find a tool that may be able to help you. Maybe someday, that tool doesn't work anymore. Maybe someday, it's a closed protocol. I know what you're saying. 
Slippery slope fallacy. That is a fallacy, Lewis. I might have believed you when I didn't have to ask people and beg them to be able to get access to GSX so that I could pair a sleep sensor in a new MacBook because apparently this sleep sensor is something that if I replace, you know, you're going to get hacked by the NSA or something or whatever. <laughs> the world is becoming a less fixable place. Every day. Every company. Every industry. It's kind of depressing, to be honest with you. Luckily for me, I have a black kitty on the chair, which cheers me up when I think about it. Because if I think about it for too long, it just kind of gets me down. But when I see the kitty on the chair, and I pet the kitty... I get a smile on my face again. Who's a good girl, Blackberry? Who's a good girl? Who's the cutest kitty in the world? Good girl, you stand on the left side of the chair. You didn't try to step on the keyboard the whole video. I'm going to get you a treat. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you in the next video because I have to get Blackberry a treat. Bye now.